What up YouTube, it's your boy True Hero, and today I'm here to help you guys out with one of the most difficult matchups in Edison format. That is of course, Black Wings. Since we put AI behind us, I'm actually gonna change the name of this series from Kaiba Talks to How to Beat. So welcome to How to Beat Black Wings. Now, interestingly enough, Black Wings did not see success at nationals as zero black wing decks made top eight however the winning deck was veyu turbo which i lost against in the finals and there were two different veyu turbo decks within top eight so whether or not you're up against black wings or veyu turbo you should still know the ins and outs of both decks and how to play against them Although Black Wings didn't top nationals, in preparation for this video, I played a lot of Black Wing recently. And as you can see, I took a loss to William Yon, and it's cool because he's actually a fan of mine. And after that loss, I went on a winning streak with Black Wings. As you can see here, I had so many different wins, right? If you count it, it's actually 19 and 0, right? The point that I'm making here is actually don't underestimate Black Wings just because they didn't top nationals. They're still just as scary as ever, and in my opinion, the best deck of the format. Now, this video is specifically focusing on Black Wings, the pure version, not the hybrid or Bayou Turbo. So let's first talk about black wings and what they do many of you have experience against black wings so you might already be familiar with the cards but you have blizzard which can't be special summoned and he himself when he's normal summon can special summon a level four or lower monster from the grave which is really good for making synchros and he can easily make level five or level six synchros you have bora which does piercing and he can special summon himself if you control another black wing you have Gale, limited to one, one of the best Blackwing monsters of the deck. He can special summon himself if you control another Blackwing, and he also can half the attack and defense of one of your opponent's monsters once per turn. You have Kalut, which is like the honest of Blackwings. During the damage step, you can drop him from your hand to the grave to make one of your Blackwing monsters gain 1400 attack until the end of the turn. And you have Shora. Shora, the Blackwing monster that everyone is scared to go against when paired up with black whirlwind but anyway what shora does is he recruits other black wings when he destroys an opponent's monster by battle and with 1800 attack points plus the help of kalut it's not hard for shora to recruit different black wings from the deck now of course he does have a limiting factor which is the monster that comes from the deck has to have an attack of 1500 or less but still that can recruit a variety of different black wings, such as Gale, Kalut, Veyu, and in some builds, even Mistrabal. So Shura, one of the most prominent black wings in the deck. And then of course you have Sirocco and Veyu. Now Sirocco, he can normal summon himself when your opponent controls a monster. And when you activate his effect, he gains the attack of all black wing monsters on the field. Not just your side of the field, but the entire field. So Sirocco is really good against the Mirror Match and uh, the other Veyu Sirocco decks. And lastly, you have Veyu. Now, Veyu himself, he actually cannot be used as Synchro material. Nevertheless, if you bring him out with Shora, his effect is negated. Therefore, you can use him as Synchro material. Also, when he's in the grave, you can banish him and another black wing to special summon a black ring synchro monsters whose level equals the total of the two different cards that were banished. So a lot of people only play one or two values, but I think that this is incorrect. Black wings struggle when they have a monster shortage, which means you should definitely be running three. If you take a look at this list on screen, this is actually the list that I came in third place with at RBET. And as you can see, I main deck triple value and triple Icarus. And the reason is because 
Veyu or Bayou, sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. But anyway, he's the best monster to pair with Icarus Attack because you don't want to tribute a real monster such as Shora, Bora, but you want to tribute Veyu. It's the best two for two in the game. So you should be running at least two, but I highly recommend three Veyus. So that's it for the monsters. And of course, you have Dark Arm, which is a staple, and you have Gores, which is not so much of a staple. However, I explained this in my RBET Top 8 video, where I said that Gores, although he's not typically played in Black Wings, I think that he is good, despite the fact that you play many spells and traps, especially continuous spells and traps, such as Royal Oppression and Black Rowan. Reason being, if you have Black Rowan up, if you have Ro Royal Oppression up, more than likely, you're already winning the game. So you don't need to worry about Gores conflicting. But if you don't have those cards up, then Gores can definitely save you out of a tight situation. And lastly, onto the spells, Allure, which is standard, Black Rowan, this is one of the best cards in the deck. It allows you to add a Blackwing monster from your deck to your hand with an attack less than the monster that you summoned. If you open up Whirlwind plus Shora or Bora, more than likely you're going to win that game. That's how powerful this card is. And I play Triple Book of Moon. Now, there is some debate on whether or not Book of Moon is good at triplicates at three in Black Wings because Book of Moon by itself is actually a minus one. However, the reason why I play three is because it pairs nicely with Shora and it can also interrupt a variety of different plays such as stopping your opponent from synchro summoning and it also is really good against the mirror match because oftentimes the opponent will try to play around it like it's an Icarus attack then when they get their monster booked then they can no longer summon any other monsters and now you only have one card on the field so you're able to capitalize. So Book of Moon is a very versatile card but I can understand why people don't want to run it in three. These days, a lot of Blackwing decks are actually running Yada. Yada the trap card, not Yada Garasu, right? Because that card is banned. And Yada is really good because it allows you to pull into your combo pieces faster. Blackwing is a mixture of a control and combo deck. So Yada helps pull into the cards faster. Not to mention, opponents often try to play around Icarus Attack and when they're doing so, they're not playing around Yada. And Yada can also bait out cards like MST and Heavy Storm. So Yada is an excellent substitute for Book of Moon. Then you have Brain Control, Heavy. These two spells should be played in almost any deck along with MST. So these three spells should be played in almost any deck because they're that powerful. And now I opt to play Mind Control. My control is really good because look how many tuners you play. You play four different tuners, right? Triple Blizzard and Gale. And if you count Veyu, you actually play seven. Now remember, Veyu cannot be used as synchro material, but if you bring one out with the help of Shura, then you can use Veyu in conjunction with Mind Control. So with all these tuners, then it's a no-brainer why I chose to play Mind Control. On to the traps. Deck Devastation Virus. Now, many Blackwing players do not main deck this. Actually, to my knowledge, I'm the only one who main decks it. But this card is cited in almost every single Blackwing deck. And the reason why I main deck it is just because when you gain hand knowledge, it's very difficult to lose the duel. Triple Icarus, the best trap card in Blackwing's hands down. This is what makes Blackwing so scary because you can simply tribute one of your weak monsters to get rid of any two cards on the field. Mirror Force, standard to stop attacks, Royal Oppression. Now these days, we're seeing a rise in Diva Hero. I wonder why. And with the rise in Diva Hero and other decks, such as even the Plant Amaryllis deck, right? That relies on special summoning, Royal Oppression is becoming more popular. However, when we look at the meta as a whole, I still think it is right to just play one Royal Oppression. Even though Royal Oppression is good against the two aforementioned decks, there are still a plethora of other decks in the meta, such as Hero Beat, 
and even the black ring mirror or Veyu turbo where you don't really want to draw royal oppression against so rather than main two oppressions i still think at this point in the edison format meta it's better to main one and side one then we have solemn torrential dust shoot the standard three traps that once again if you're playing a control deck these three cards can carry you very far and in almost any type of deck really you're going to see success with these three cards solemn is just the say no card right torrential stops your opponent from over committing and if they do they lose the whole field and dust shoot the second best card in edison format first being brain control now that's it for the black wing main deck and my side deck I'm not going to get into too much detail why I side the cards that I do because that is going to be for a separate portion of the video. Not so much what I side, but rather how to side against Black Wings. But we will just briefly go over the extra deck, right? So generally, this is just a standard Black Wing extra deck, right? Other Black Wing extra decks may differ from card to card, but for the most part, it'll look just like this. We have Chimera Tech, so to stop machines. Uh, Cataster, standard level five. It's a utility card and out to a lot of different things in the meta. Black Rose, because Black Wings can easily make level sevens and to clear the field. Silver Wind, this is just a synchro that you exclusively bring out through Veyu's effect. Then you have Arm Wing. A lot of Black Wing players don't make Arm Wing enough. This card is broken. One, it also pairs with Veyu, and two, it has a really good effect. When it attacks the defense position monster, it goes up to 28, and, or it gains 500 rather, and it also does piercing, just like Bora. So Armwing is like a powered up Bora. And actually, if you look at the two different pictures, Armwing and Bora, you can see they're very similar, right? The difference being that Bora has a spear and Armwing has a shotgun. Then we have Armor Master, right? So I'm guessing Armor Master is like a powered up version of Shora, right? Because if you look, Shora and Armor Master, their stances are kind of similar. However, their effects are very different, but they do have the similarity in that they're both effects that activate when this card attacks, right? So Shora, he recruits a guy when he destroys a monster by battle, but Armor Master, one, he can't be destroyed by battle, and you also don't take battle damage. So he's like Spirit Reaper on crack, right? But not only that, when he attacks a monster, they get a wedge counter. And a lot of players forget to utilize this effect. Then you can remove a wedge counter to make your opponent's attack zero. So this is a very, very powerful card. Attack and defense zero until the end of the turn. Next, we have Brio. One of the best, if not the best synchro in Edison format meta. He can just clear everything without any problem. And he also works well with Veyu and Sirocco because you can pitch those cards to manipulate your graveyard and then summon a Synchro from Veyu's effect. Colossal Fighter, Dark End, Goyu, Android, Stardust, Thought Ruler, right? The reason why I'm speeding through these last six is because they're all just generic Synchros, right? Colossal can't be destroyed by battle. Dark End, another contender for one of the best Synchros in Edison format meta. Actually, during the real Edison format meta, Dark End was just a prize card, so a lot of people couldn't even play him. But now that cards have been reprinted, everybody has access to this guy. He's really good, and you can even use him to help out against Gorus and other recruiters. So Dark End, an amazing card. Goyu, I can't believe Konami printed this card. It's on crack. It's like change of heart. But anyway, 2800 attack, can take an opponent's monster. Android, just a generic level five that can help you gain life. Stardust, another contender for one of the best synchros in the game, right? And his effect is very versatile in that he can stop destruction effects. And also he can be easily made with the help of, but not just him, any level eight synchro can be easily made with the help of Sirocco into Gale or even Armwing into Blizzard. And if you're playing Mistrable, then you have more options as well. And lastly, Thought Ruler. This guy is just a generic level eight, but the fact that he can't be targeted means that he helps play around cards like Brain Control, Deep Prison, Compulsory, etc. So that in a nutshell explains my personal Blackwing deck. 
why I play the cards that I play them. And now we're going to get into the general strategy when you're going up against black wings. Okay, so when you're going up against black wings, you first need to know how to play against them and how to side against them. So cards that you want to avoid against the black wing matchup is, of course, Icarus Attack, which means generally you should not be committing more than two cards to the field. If you can play around it in a way that allows you to not commit a lot of board presence, this is the most effective way to play against black wings. Secondly, if you can prevent black wing monsters from entering the graveyard, especially level four monsters, then you can cut off Blizzard, which is one of the most broken top decks. Now, next in line, you wanna also cut off Veyu's and Sirocco's from entering the grave as well. But if you can only choose one, I recommend cutting off level fours because it's much easier for Black Wings to do damage with level, sync, level six synchro monsters than it is with level six synchro monsters brought out through Veyu's effect, or even level seven, eight monsters brought out through Veyu's effect, right? Because remember, when they come to the field, their effects are negated. So they're just giant beat sticks. So once again, one, play around Icarus attack by not committing more than two cards to the field, two or more cards to the field, and two, prevent level four monsters from entering the graveyard. Now, additional tips when playing against black wings, you need to be mindful of the possible cards that they can have, which means checking their graveyard often. You wanna check their graveyard for two things. One, for how many darks that they have in the graveyard. Because if they have three darks, you need to begin to consider Dark Arm Dragon. And two, you should also check the graveyard to see if they have Kalut. Because if they don't have Kalut in the, in the grave, there is a high chance that they can have Kalut in the hand. So you want to do your best to play around Kalut as possible. So some ways that you can play around Kalut, of course, are with the help of cards like Caius the Shadow Monarch. By banishing, the monster that they have on field, then of course they can't collute you. And collute by himself is just a 1400 vanilla monster, basically, right? Collute is a good black wing, but he's better when he's paired with another black wing. By himself, he doesn't do that much. So definitely try to prevent your opponent from activating collute. Now, these are just general tips that you should keep in mind when going against black wings. So let's talk about games two and three so how to side first we're going to talk about what to side out and then we're going to talk about what to side in okay so you can see the first monster that i have to take out is battle fader now battle fader in itself is a very good card but he represents more than just battle fader you need to think about what black wings are going to side in against you and a popular side deck card, as I mentioned before, is Deck Devastation Virus, which means you wanna side out cards that can potentially get hit by this card. Also, if you're running Battle Fader, more than likely your deck relies on Special Summoning. So Deck Devastation Virus becomes a threat and Royal Oppression can also become a threat. So Battle Fader, I highly recommend siding this card out games two and three against black wings next we have morphing jar now not many decks actually main deck morphing jar but if you are playing this you should side it out because one it gets hit by deck devastation virus and two filling up a black wings player's hand is one of the worst things that you can do because when you activate the effect even if they had let's say a full five cards in their hand right and you think that you're getting a huge plus against them you need to think about what could potentially go to the grave. You can send Veyus and Sorokos to the grave, which will be a plus for them. And even if you just send cards like, let's say, Shora or Bora, now their Blizzard becomes live. So you don't want to activate Morphing Jar against Black Wings because they can actually gain a greater advantage than you can. Next, we have Mystic Tomato. 
Now, Mystic Tomato is a great card as well, but the reason why you want to side him out is because, one, he's weak against Deck Devastation Virus, so you're starting to get the theme of this, right? And two, more importantly, he is Shora Food. Now, not only Mystic Tomato, but cards like Mystic Tomato, which include Pyramid Turtle as well. All of these cards just feed Shora. And when Shora destroys a monster by battle, it gives the Blackwing player a plus one. So you don't want to plus your opponent. So by preventing these cards from even hitting the field by signing them out, then you're strengthening your matchup against Blackwings. Next, we have Spirit Reaper. Now, I'm sure you know what I'm going to say. If you've been listening, one, it can get hit by Deck Devastation Virus. Now, although Spirit Reaper is not sure of food because it can't be destroyed by battle, the reason why this card is not good against Black Wings is because he is Bora food. And more importantly, Arm Wing food, which means every time an Arm Wing attacks you, you're going to take 26 direct. So he's not that beneficial. 2600 life points is a big chunk of damage. And even with just a Bora, you'll take 15 and forbid that the opponent has a Kalut in their hand as well. So, whereas you think you might be protecting your life points with Spirit Reaper, he can actually wind up costing you the game. So, I highly recommend siding this card out against Black Wings. Now, Gold Sark. Gold Sark, the reason why you may want to consider siding this card out, and it also it depends on the deck that you're playing, right? If you're playing a deck like Neuralis Turbo or Dragon Turbo, right? These Turbo decks, then you need to keep your Sarks in because those are your win conditions. But if you're playing a deck like Diva Hero or even Diva Hero B, basically a deck where Gold Sark isn't 100% necessary, when you're going second, consider siding it out. Reason being, it's too slow. And Black Wings, they're an aggro, offensive deck. So they can easily put a lot of damage on the board before you have an opportunity to resolve your Gold Sark. It's also not the best top deck card depending on the situation. So consider siding this card out. Next we have the trap lineup, Royal Oppression. Now Royal Oppression has mixed success against Black Wings. It can stop cards like Gale, Blizzard, prevent your opponent from Synchro Summoning. It can even stop Bora. Royal Oppression actually has a lot of good versatility against Black Wings. Nevertheless, Black Wings don't need to special summon in order to win. They can just simply beat you by control. Summon Sirocco, and then if you have Oppression up, they can just beat you down with Sirocco. And at any point in time, if Royal Oppression becomes too much of a hindrance, they can just Icarus attack it away. So this card, unfortunately, is not the best side deck choice against Black Wings. Next, we have Solemn. Now, Solemn can be hit or miss. If you're going first, then Solemn Judgment can actually be very beneficial because it can stop your opponent in their tracks. But when you're going second, so consider this for game two and three, you need to side this card out because you're gonna take so much damage, you're already a turn behind, and you're gonna take so much damage that a Blackwing player can easily do 4,000 damage, right? Summon Sirocco, Special Summon Bora, that's already 37. And that's a very common play with Blackwings. So when you're going second, this card is not worth it. Same with the next in the line, Trap Dust Shoot. This card, if you activate it, more than likely you're going to win. And it doesn't just apply for Black Wings against almost any deck. That's how busted this card is. Yet, Black Wings, they typically are very back row heavy. So they're going to set a lot of cards. So there's a very high chance that you're not going to be able to resolve your Dust Shoot. And the last thing you need is a dead card against Black Wings. The final card to side out that I recommend is Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. And the reason for siding this out is because it's too slow and it's a two for one. And let's say your opponent has Whirlwind plus a Black Wing. Next turn, they're just going to Whirlwind you again. Next turn, they're just going to summon their Black Wing again. It's too slow against Black Wings. So don't take the neg don't go minus one you need to keep tempo as much as possible against black wings now usually in these type of videos i like to provide a 10th card to side out 
But what you have to remember is these are just general side decking tips. So the 10th card always depends on your deck specifically. So think about what your deck is weak against in the Blackwing matchup and side that card out. If you're playing a card like, for example, Triple D Prison, and you're having trouble for another card to put in that would be more effective against Black Wings, then go ahead and side out that D Prison, right? You don't need three. But the reason why I don't have D Prison up here is because D Prison can actually be very good against Black Wings. But you need to think about what's going to be more beneficial, a second or third copy of a card or a side deck card that you put in. So I'll leave the 10th card that you side out against Black Wings up to you. Now let's talk about what to side in against Black Wings. As I mentioned previously, Sirocco can gain the attack of all Black Wing monsters on the field, which means at the very least, when you summon Sirocco against your opponent, your opponent's going to take 2,000 points of damage. So this card is very good against the Black Wing matchup. Not to mention, because it's only one card, it also plays around Icarus Attack. This is one of the best generic cards that you can use to side against Black Wings. Caius, it goes without saying why this card is good against Black Wings. For one, you'll get the extra burn damage 100% of the time, right? Maybe not 100, right? Because there's a chance that your opponent could have a sinker up, but it's a very, very high chance that when you summon Caius, your opponent's going to take at least a thousand points. So he's removal because he clears the field of any Black Wing monster. He can stop Kalut in that manner. And two, he can also remove Black Whirlwind. As I said, that is another problematic card. Whenever you're playing against Black Wings, if they play Black Whirlwind, you need to remove that card as soon as possible. Because if they normal summon successfully, I'd say two to three times, it's gonna to be too hard to win that game because they've already gained so much advantage from Black Whirlwind. Next up, we have Consecrated Light. This is probably single-handedly the best card that you can side against Black Wings because their entire deck is dark. Not a single monster that Black Wing decks typically play is not dark. Now, some builds main deck Cyber Dragon. I personally don't think that those builds are very good but I understand the logic behind it because it gives them an additional play. It's also level five, so it helps with Gale. They can make level eights easier because Black Wings, their turn also usually ends when you bottomless them. So Cyber Dragon allows an extension of plays. However, generally, Black Wings will not be able to easily out this card. But you need to keep in mind when you're siding in Consecrated Light, they're siding in cards to beat Consecrated Light which includes cards like Fissure that I may side rather in my Blackwing deck. Also, Deck Devastation Virus, which completely destroys Consecrated Light. So an opponent can go set Sirocco, set Deck Devastation Virus, activate Deck Devi, and now Consecrated is gone for good. And additionally, Blackwing players side in cards like Fossil Dina and DD Warrior Lady. So all of these cards can out Consecrated Light. However, if you have a way to protect your Consecrated with like a trap or even a, a battle card such as Book of Moon, Enemy Controller, it can be very difficult for the Blackwing player to get rid of Consecrated Light. But keep in mind, Blackwing players also have access to Icarus Attack, which is another out to Consecrated Light. Next up, we have Gores. Now, many players main deck Gores, but if you're not main decking Gores, then it can also be a good side deck card against Blackwings because Blackwings are so aggro that when they're going for game if you drop a gores you can stop them in their track and then the duel can switch tides but bear in mind when gores summons himself he also summons a token which means you're going to have two cards on the field which puts you at harm of icarus attack next up we have snowman eater snowman eater is good for two reasons one his defense stat is really high. The only monster that Black Wings can normal summon to get over it would be Sirocco. And two, his effect also pretty good. It gets rid of any card that might have been able to beat it anyway. So Snowman Eater is definitely a good wall against Black Wings. Typically, if the opponent has a monster like Bora or Shora, they also would need to collute to get rid of it. So Snowman Eater is just a great card against Black Wings. Next up we have 
TKR, Thunder King Ryo. Now this card is mixed. And the reason why it's mixed is because as Snowman Eater has a high defense, this monster has a high offense, right? A high attack stat, 19. So it's very strong. It can be any black wing that's not Soroko that could be normal summoned. And it also cuts off access to synchros because you contribute to negate the summon of a synchro. And it cuts off black whirlwind, which is, as I said before, one of the most devastating cards that black wing decks play. So Thunder King definitely has a lot of good merits. You just have to keep him safe from cards like Icarus Attack and Sirocco. Next up, my body. Now my body, this card can be used to counter the aforementioned Icarus attack. So when your opponent goes Icarus, you can just go chain my body, and now they've lost two cards and you've only lost one. So they lost Icarus and the monster that they tributed, and you've only lost 1,500 life points. So if you keep this card in your hand as well, it could be an excellent surprise. So your opponent will go Icarus, they'll attempt to destroy your cards on the field, and then you can just go my body. But keep in mind, my body only works if your opponent is going to target monsters. If they go Icarus and they target both your back rows, then unfortunately, my body will be useless. Next up, we have Nobleman. Now, the reason why Nobleman is good against Black Wings is because Black Wings heavily rely on their spells and traps, especially their traps. And Nobleman, when it destroys or rather banishes a card, then all copies also have to be removed. So let's say you go Nobleman and you hit Icarus Attack. Well, now all of their Icarus Attacks are out the game for the rest of that duel. So Nobleman is an excellent card to counter Icarus Attack and not just Icarus Attack, other spells and traps too. So it does exactly what the name says. It exterminates any back rows that would have been problematic when you're playing against Black Wings. Then we have Smashing Ground. Now, Smashing Ground is just a generic one for one. Now, generally, when I'm going second, I would side out a card like Trap Dust Shoot for Smashing Ground. Reason being is because even though Black Wings are aggro, as I mentioned before, they're also a control deck. So you're either going to go against the Black Wing game where they're swarming the field or the Black Wing game where they're beating you down with just one monster like a Sirocco and like five back rows. Nevertheless, Smashing Ground is good because it can out Armor Master. If they only have one monster, it can out that one monster. And even if you have another card on the field, if they Icarus and they target your Smashing plus your other card, that's OK, right? Because they had to use their Icarus on your Smashing Ground and its effect is not going to get negated. So this is an excellent one for one that you can consider siding in against Black Wings. Next up, we have Bottomless. Bottomless is good because one, it stops the summon. Cards that stop the summon, such as Bottomless, and as we can see, Trap Hole, and also cards like uh, Book of Moon, right? Because you can activate this on the summon. Any cards that stop the summon, which basically prevents them from being face up on the field at resolution, not only does it end the Black Wing's turn because Black Wing monsters need another Black Wing monster to continue their special summoning, it also stops Black Rowan. So when you activate a card like Bottomless, Trap Hole, or Book of Moon, when your opponent has Black Rowan up on the field, Black Rowan needs to check the monster's attack stats before it can search. So all these cards will either remove the monster from the field or if the monster is face down, then the attack is read as zero. So there are great cards to stop Black Wings. Then we have Dust Tornado. So as you can tell from this video, the key cards in the Black Wing deck are Black Whirlwind and Icarus Attack. So Dust Tornado stops these cards. It also stops Royal Oppression too, right? Three very deadly cards can all be stopped with the help of Dust Tornado. But sometimes Dust Tornado isn't enough. And you need a more efficient way of stopping multiple trap cards. I say this, right? When you're up against Black Wings, you generally don't lose to Black Wings themselves, right? You don't lose to the monsters or the monster effects. You lose to their traps because their traps, their traps are so good and they can really only be used as effectively in the Black Wing deck. So that's when cards like Royal Decree come in. 
However, a lot of decks also rely on their traps as well. So an alternative, if you can't play Royal Decree because your deck's playing too many traps, then you can also side in Trap Stun. Trap Stun has the exact same effect as Royal Decree, but it only lasts for one turn. So that way you can negate all of your opponent's traps for that one turn, make your big push and win the game. Now this card doesn't see much play and there's a reason for it. First of all, you need to know how Shadow Imprisoning Mirror works. Shadow Imprisoning Mirror actually does not stop continuous effects, nor does it stop summoning conditions. So what that means in layman's terms is it does hinder black wings, but not as much as you would think. So let's go over how Shadow Imprisoning Mirror affects black wings. Against Shora, because when you special summon a monster when it's destroyed, when it's sure it destroys the monster by battle, this is considered a trigger effect. So Shadow Imprisoning Mirror would stop Shora from summoning a monster from the deck. Bora, when he special summons himself from the hand, this is actually a summoning condition. So it doesn't stop Bora from special summoning himself. And his piercing effect is a continuous effect. So Bora is not affected by Shadow Imprisoning Mirror at all. He still can pierce, he still can special summon himself. Sirocco. Now, summoning himself, this is once again a condition. So, Shadow and Prison Mirror will not negate the effect of him being able to summon himself, though he's five stars. However, it does stop his effect to boost himself, because that is an ignition effect. Now, Blizzard. When Blizzard is summoned, and he activates the effect to bring a level four or lower Blackwing monster from the grave, this is an ignition effect. So Shadow and Prison Mirror will stop this. However, Blackwing, a uh, Blizzard, not being able to be special summoned, this is actually a summoning condition, which means even if you have Shadow and Prison Mirror up on the field, Blizzard cannot be special summoned. Next up, we have Veyu. Now, Veyu not being able to be used as synchro material is a continuous effect. So this effect will not be negated. However, the effect which allows you to banish him and another black wing monster from the graveyard is an ignition effect. So this effect will be negated. And lastly, we have Armor Master and Arm Wing. So Armor Master, when he puts a counter on a monster, this is a trigger effect. So it will be negated. But the more crucial effect, right, which plays more often, is him not being able to be destroyed by battle and not taking battle damage. This is a continuous effect. So this will not be negated. And lastly, we have Arm Wing. Just as Bora, this is also a continuous effect, both the gain and the piercing. So Shadow and Prison Mira does not affect Arm Wing at all. So, because Shadow and Prison Mira still allows some of the Black Wing monster's effects to activate, this is why it doesn't see that much play. But still, it can be used in various circumstances to slow down the Black Wing deck just a bit. And lastly, since we've already talked about Trap Hole, lastly we have Starlight Road. Now, Starlight Road, Starlight, Star Bright. If you are able to successfully resolve this card against Black Wings, more than likely you're going to win the game. Now, you can use this card in a plethora of different ways. You can use it when the Black Wing player goes Heavy Storm or when the Black Wing player goes Mirror Force. Though many Black Wing decks don't play Torrential, you can also use it against Torrential. But the most common card that you'll use Starlight Road against is Icarus attack. Now, in order to play against Icarus attack as best as possible, when you have Starlight Road, let's say you're going first. Well, if you're going first, then it, it doesn't matter, right? You could just set everything. But let's say you're going second and you have a read your opponent has Icarus. Only set the Starlight Road, right? If you set multiple back roads at that time, the opponent can just go end phase Icarus and you won't get a chance to resolve your Starlight Road. Another thing to keep in mind is Starlight Road, because it's special summon Stardust, it can actually be negated by the Blackwing player's Royal Oppression. So let's say the Blackwing player goes Icarus and destroys two of your cards. You chain Starlight Road. 
Now the Blackwing player can chain Royal Oppression and it will negate your Starlight Road. You won't special summon Stardust and your cards will still be destroyed. So just keep that in mind that Starlight Road is an excellent side deck card against Black Wings, but it does have counterplay to it via Royal Oppression. So these are all just general side decking tips against Black Wings. The last thing I wanna show you is actually a duel and how to put everything that I've talked about in this series into one cohesive matter to help you win against your next Black Wing matchup. Okay, so unfortunately this set is quite short because my opponent quit in the middle of the set. But I still think for all the viewers watching, you can learn some essential plays when up against Black Wings. Now, I'm up against Seto Kiddo. I guess that's a play on Seto Kaibo. It's actually a pretty cool name. So I do win the RPS. And it's a Black Wing mirror match. So first I go summon Shora, set Book of Moon, and I pass. Now, of course, at this point in time, I don't know that I'm up against Black Wings. So my opponent goes summon Shora, set two, and pass. And on his end phase, I go Book of Moon. Now, I could have also booked when he initially summoned the Shora. However, Seto was playing so fast, but it worked out in my favor. The reason why Book of Moon is so good in this scenario is because one, if I book the monster on summon, let's say my opponent has Gale. Well, now he can no longer summon Gale. Additionally, by booking the Shora, now I only have one card on the field. Like I said, against Black Wings, you always want to do your best to play around Icarus Attack. And when we look here, we can actually see that he does indeed have the Icarus attack. So Book of Moon is a really good card against Black Wings because you can quickly get rid of it. So my opponent passes, and even though I have options such as setting a back row main phase one or even normal summoning Quilute, these are not good plays because once again, you want to keep your field with only one card if possible when you're up against Black Wings. So now my Shora is able to run against his Shora and I'm able to search out a value from the deck. So now I can set my Icarus, which gives me the upper hand. And in addition to setting Icarus, I also set Trap Dust Shoot. So now here, once again, Seto Kiddo is playing fast. As you can see, he's still in his draw phase and he just summons Shora. You can't do that. You have to go in order of the proper phases. So I tell my opponent to pick his Shora back up and during his standby phase, I activate Trap Dust Shoot. Now, the reason why I didn't flip it immediately is because actually the turn player has priority to take an action. So during his draw phase, if he has a card like MST, he can actually play that before I can activate and resolve my Trap Dust Shoot. So I activate Trap Dust Shoot and I send back his Shora. Now, if you watch closely, he puts Shora back on the top of his deck, but he doesn't shuffle his deck. So I ask him to shuffle, please. And then he summons Bora. But once again, he needs to fully resolve Trap Dust Shoot. So I tell him yet again, no, please put Bora in your hand. And I activate Icarus Attack, taking out both of his back rows because I have a read that one of his back rows is Icarus Attack. And my read was correct. So I'm able to clear his field. He sets a monster, which I clearly know is Bora because I trap dust shooted him. And at this point, I'm able to be offensive. And my opponent concedes. So this game was pretty much over, but you can see the key elements in the Black Wing mirror match. And not only the mirror match, but just in general. Commit one card to the field play around Icarus attack. And if you want further information on how to play against Black Wings, I highly recommend that you watch my Black Wing RBET video where I came in third place. Although I'm not playing against Black Wings and I'm rather playing with Black Wings, another way you can learn the ins and outs of the Black Wing matchup is by seeing how they perform. What are their best possible options? What they can do? 
So that is about a two hour long video. And within that tournament run, I actually do play some Blackwing Mirror matches. So please check that video out if you haven't already. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. And with that, a true hero signing out. Peace. Subscribe or you too will be sent to the Shadow Realm.